Yeah, I want to show you. I got a little primed. Ready for paint? Self etching primer. Let me show you how I separate the joints on the extension piece so I can sand it and get primer in there. But I got a little primed, about two hours of prep work, degreasing with acetone, scraping a lot of the grease, especially from around the steering mechanisms. You got to kind of, you know, pick it out, wipe it, and clean it. I took the drain plugs out, the nipple for the telltale, and the leaf. I don't know where the leaf goes. <laughs> Uh, but I use this file here to get around the screws for the midsection extension there on the bottom between the lower unit and the midsection. And a straight one too I use pick tight areas. Of course I blow it off with air before I degrease it and I degrease it and blow it off with air. Try to get as much of the dirt off as I can. Well maybe paint it tomorrow. It's supposed to rain in the next few days so that doesn't help. I want to show you something else. I got the tiller all mounted. Uh, I kind of made a, my own bushings and spacer for this. Saved myself another $40 to buy the bushings and the bolt and the nut and you know. So I just took a piece of fuel line, put a bolt through it, sanded it down to the ID of the, of the uh, stern bracket hole. I don't know why they make that hole larger than the 5 16 hole on the tiller. I don't know if it was an engineering mistake. They would have made a 516, she wouldn't even have to uh, have a spacer in there. Or those special washers they have with the collar on them. But again, I saved some money doing that. And I also made my own trunnion connector. It took me about a half hour, two tries to do it. I was just basically doing it from pictures. So, but I was pretty happy the way it came out. It works good. Got a 1024 screw that holds it down. I'll show you some pictures of me manufacturing that. I'll drop them in here. But she's ready for paint, and I'm really excited to paint this thing. Rust-Oleum looks like the turbo. If I can get it here locally, I hope they have it. The guys on uh, eBay swear by it. But anything enamel. Touch-ups, I'll do with lacquer. Doesn't matter. A little bit lacquer here on the lower cowling, like I did on my last motor, and the very lower unit. But when I do like a complete engine, I want enamel on there. Of course, it's going to come off in spots too down the road. Once it dries, really good. But that's okay. It looks good when you sell it. And I did this as I did it if I would have done it for myself. You know, I didn't cut any corners as far as, you know, not hitting all the areas that really need to be uh, addressed. But she's looking good. I can't wait to paint it. I got to bolt the solenoid back in. I want to... Uh, I'm going to hook up a key, uh, turn key with this key switch on the harness. There's the two positive and negative. And I'm just going to hook up a key switch to the end here with a key with the primer because it's got the electric primer on there. I could change the carburetor and put a choke on it, but I want to leave the carb on there. It's the original one, it's got the plastic top on it. Keep it original. This is about the. Uh, Steering's all done. The transom clamps worked out really well. You saw that in my last video. So it's getting there. It's very close. Painting. I'll get the piece for the. I ordered twelve dollars on eBay. A little eye bolt to hook up my linkage, and that's done. The tiller will be done. And I got to hook up the wire. The kill wire. It's actually just a ground and one wire. I hope this. I hope this harness is compatible with this motor, but I'll make it work. I'm wearing it. And that's it on this one here. Well, to the next clip. Well, the big day has come. If I don't do it today, now, it's going to rain for the next five days. So I'm going to start right now.
do the other side. Put this coat tack up. Take two. I couldn't get the turbo paint. Nobody had it in stock. I went to like four different stores locally. I didn't want to wait to get online, so I ended up uh, using the Rust-Oleum uh, fast dry high enamel, hot plumbing enamel. Very enjoyable about painting. I don't know what it is, but it is. Now I'm going to hit the pan on this side. I've been shaking it in between coats. Second coat on this side. I'll go do the same on the other side. Give it another coat. This is where I start doing it wet. Get most of the gloss I can out of it.
see a little bit better. Lighting wasn't too good in the other location, so. Again, I like to get in between the cracks, the nooks and the crannies here, as best I can. And of course the leading edge. You always seem to miss when you do it like this. I'm actually going to rotate the whole motor into the light so I can see what I'm doing here. The opposite side. I am wearing a mask too, by the way. Not totally stupid. It's always important to see where you're painting. Top of the little cavitation plates. my little nooks and crannies. Definitely need a bigger shop. <laughs> Got a double car garage here. Half of the garage is full of motors. So I don't have a lot of room to work. But it is what it is. Some of the small stuff, like the Zerk fittings I didn't take out, I did tape some of them. You could always take a little thinner after it dries good and clean all that off if you really want to get picky about it. Like the white's a little wider than the original Johnson color. The Johnson's more of a cream color, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'll keep going at it. I'll probably put one more coat on after this. Well here I'm pulled a low unit to check the water pump before I do a final assembly. Something I should have done before I painted, but better late than never. Well here I'd like to show you the finished motor, after a lot of hard work over a couple of weeks here and there between bad inclement weather, you know, and other projects in the works. Here's the finished motor. Came out really nice. I used some Meguiar's uh, compound yesterday and I polished it actually, but you really can't see it in the shade. I left the cover alone. Cover is the only thing that's original. I did end up repainting the tiller handle on it, preserving the original decals. I resprayed the uh, tiller. The only thing left is to, uh, I ordered the key switch yesterday. I'm going to put a key switch on the very end here so I could utilize the electric primer 
and the original circuits. And I'm also wiring the kill button. I'm in the process of doing that now. Wiring the kill button. So there'll be two cutoffs. Key switch and also the button on the uh, tiller. And I cleaned up the inside of the motor. You know, the front pan area I redid. I did grease the motor, it was really dirty. Touched up some spots where the Sharpie that where the paint was missing. Small spots. But she came out nice. I mean, for rattle can job, I think it's pretty nice. I mean, you can't expect too much. I put a new stripe on the bottom. OMC stripe, bought on eBay, it was uh, under $10. They gave you like three times the length you need, so I got more for more motors in the future. But she looks really good. I'm gonna list this one pretty soon and move it on its way. I just thought you'd like to see the finished results after all that hard work, starting with that annoying black, a flat black paint that was on here, taking that off with the uh, black thinner and the double art steel wool. But she's looking good. I still got to, I, I got to find my grommet here. I misplaced it. I got to cut it. Originally, uh, it wasn't cut out for the cable because I never had a tiller. So I got to put that back on and just leave it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that, but if I find it, I'll put it back on. But I hope you enjoyed watching this little uh, crusade with this motor. 1990 ugly duckling transformed into a white swan. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned.